A key concept in the article related to business processes is that when you define a business process, you define a, a capability in one area, but disabilities in other areas. Okay, and this, this is related to the thoughts in another article called What is Strategy from HBR. It's really good. We'll do a separate video on that. But in essence, what it means is you can't be good at everything, right? As you become good at one thing, you're going to not be as good at other things. Okay, so the example they use in the article, that other article, is a Southwest. They only fly one kind of airplane. And, you know, what does that do? Well, it allows them to, to uh, you know, it's easier to train mechanics because they're all working on the same plane. It's easier to order parts because you... You're ordering the same set of parts, you know, they can they can turn planes around faster after they land, you know, it makes it easier to train the pilots, it's, all this stuff is easier, but they got one one kind of plane. You know, they don't fly a small plane and a big plane. So that pre you know that creates disabilities as well as capabilities. So it's the same thing with, with surveying. And um, I, I I tried to think about how could I apply this to surveying. This is the best example I could come up with probably a better one, but this is what I got. So when you work at an organization that does primarily government contract work, those organizations, survey organizations, get very good at the process of preparing government proposals. So either an SOQ, statement of qualifications, or an actual proposal. And that you know the government, especially like the state of California, they just that is a nightmare process, right? And there's these resumes have to be in a special format, and they, and they want to know every project you've worked on the last five years, and they want to know when you've been sued and by who, and there's all these standard forms that you have to fill out, and it's just, I mean, companies spend tens of thousands of dollars putting these proposals together. So that over time, they develop a process for that, and they just, they become very efficient at it. And they have templates, and they have, so a lot of the standard forms are filled out, and they know where to go to get the information. Whereas if you're a company like Refine Horizons, and you do private sector work, you don't do any government work, you know, we're not, we're not doing that for private sector clients. Uh, usually when a private sector client calls me, they've already, I bet they've been referred to me, they've checked us out, they know that we're qualified to do the work, and what they really want is just the meat and potatoes. Scope and fee. That's what I want to know. Scope and fee. Right? That's what the, that's what the clients tell me. You know, they don't, they don't want to see a resume, two-page resume for everybody on my staff. That's just, that's not important to them. They want to know, what am I going to do to solve their problem? You know, how much is it going to cost? And sometimes they want to schedule. How long is it going to take? And so if we had to put together a big government proposal here at Refine Horizons, we would struggle with that. Not just the first time, but the first several times. Because there's just it's complicated and it's a it's a it's a nightmare process and there's a lot of paperwork. And until we developed a system to do that, uh, we would struggle. Now, you know, so one thing we can do here at Reed Fire Horizon, Horizons is, you know, if you call me at 10 a.m. and you need a proposal for a land title survey on a five-acre parcel in downtown San Francisco, um, you know, I can turn that around to you before I leave at the end of the day. So we're very quick. We can put scopes and fees together quickly. We have templates designed for that. Um, so we can we can respond quickly, and which is important in the type of work that we do. Uh, you know, the, those big firms that do government work, yeah, they're really good at putting together those proposals, uh, but they probably struggle to turning around a, a scope and a fee and a schedule and a cover letter in four to six hours because their process just isn't built for that. I got another example. Um, so let's just say you take a traditional survey crew they, that they all they do is topo, primarily topo. So they're topographic surveyors. You know, they run, they're running either a Dunan crew on a total station or maybe they've got a robot, robot but they just, they're kind of single point shot topo surveyors. Nothing wrong with that. It's a, it's a Good way to work in a lot of cases, but that's all they do. Now you take that same crew, let's so say it's a two-man crew, and you take their total station away, and you give them a scanner, and you said, from now on, everything you you topo is going to be done with a scanner. Now, how's that crew going to do the first three months, six months maybe? They're going to struggle, right? Especially if you don't give them any training. They're just that process that you go through to do a total station topo is just completely different from what you do with a scanner. Right? Same thing if you take that, that topo crew, total station topo crew, and you give them you take away their total station and you give them a UAV and you say from now on every all the topos you do are gonna be aerial. And you you gotta use a UAV for everything. You know how are those guys gonna do with no training? They're gonna struggle, right? They're gonna they're gonna mess some stuff up. There's a totally different process that you go through to do aerial mapping with the UAV than you do to do to do ground topo with a total station. So processes define capabilities and also disabilities at the same time, and you have to understand that. All right, last 
Second to last section, an organization's values are the standards that employees use to prioritize. So they talk a little bit about culture and how processes turn into culture. And what they basically say is, you know, every day across an organization, employees have to make decisions about what's important and what's not important. Prioritize, right? They've got to set priorities. And so what, what clear values do, cultural values or cultural norms do in an organization is they help those employees make consistent decision making because they have a set of rules to play by, right? And that's why culture is so important. When you, when you get into organizations that have a corrupt culture, uh, then you get widespread problems like Wells Fargo is an example, right? All those people at Wells Fargo that were creating uh, accounts for customers that, that the customers didn't ask for, fake accounts, right? It's a widespread corruption problem and it became culturally acceptable to do that. So what you want is you want a clear set of cultural values that help employees make those decisions without always having to be told from the top what to do. And part of how you do that is with your processes, right? So over time, those processes define values, right? And so, for example, when, when, you talk, when you think about the firm that does government work with the long proposal process versus a private firm that does quick proposals, simple quick proposals, you know, think about the cultural values that reinforces, right? So part of what that's going to reinforce is that in order to, you know, at the, at the first firm, the government firm, you know, to properly prepare a proposal requires a huge time and effort. Right, and so people, that's going to get ingrained in people, and we're going to think, man, okay, it takes us, it takes us five business days and forty staff hours to prepare a proposal, right? And and as a consequence of that, you're only going to go after projects that have a very high dollar value and work, right? You're not going to go after smaller projects because your proposal costs are too high, and you can't recoup your proposal cost in the work. So that 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 process, proposal process, actually shapes. The values of the company. What type of work is important to us? What type of work do we value? What type of client do we value? You know, how do we know if a proposal is done well or done poorly? That process is going to shape all that, all those cultural norms. Okay. So I'll give you an example from my own company here at Redefine Horizons. We don't do lot surveys here. Period. We just we don't do them. Uh, if I got to do a lot survey for a friend or a family member, we don't charge them. We just do it for free. I'm not in the business of doing lot surveys. There's reasons why. I don't want to get into that, uh, but my, my team has come to appreciate that as one of our values, right? So they don't even come and ask me anymore if somebody needs a lot survey. Somebody calls and wants a lot survey, they, they just, they've learned to just tell people well, that's not the line of business we're in, we can refer you to a surveyor that does that kind of work. I don't even get those, I don't even get those requests now because my team has learned through experience that we don't do lot surveys and I've, and I've explained to them over and over why we don't do them and they've seen They've seen the reasons demonstrated to them. They know why we don't do it. Okay, so we're building that, uh, you know, through our process that we use to select work, we're, we're building some cultural norms there, right? This is just, this is not a survey that does a lot, a company that does a lot of surveys, and it never will be. That's not the best use of our skills. So the, the last key concept that I wanted to go over from the, from the article was the way organizations change as they age and how capabilities, where capabilities reside in, a, in an organization evolves over time. So in a young organization, so Redefined Horizons is an example, we're, we're a young company, okay, capabilities reside in people, not processes. So, you know, young companies are really about who's the star players, right? You know, most young companies have a very active founder, so I'm an example of that. Um, and that, that, you know, that founder has, usually has an outsized personality. They tend to be overconfident and super enthusiastic and they love what they do. So I'm an example of all those things, right? Um, and they're just the driving force behind the company. And the, and the first few employees at a company are really key, right? Like that's one of the reasons I picked the partner I did. You know, he's a, he's a great guy, he's a hard worker, and he's a great surveyor, he has good, strong moral values. And I knew the partner I chose was going to have a huge influence on the type of business that I built. So when, when companies are young, that's where the capabilities reside. They reside with the people. But over time, as companies work to standardize their processes, to define their processes, those capabilities migrate from people to the organization itself. Right? So then you can take a surveyor from company A, plug them into company B, and if the processes are well-defined, he'll be able to just kind of assimilate into the new organization to some extent. Right? And you'll be able to plug people in and, and keep those 
you know, the, the capabilities of the organization become somewhat independent from the people because of the way the processes are designed. And so, you know, one thing that's really important for, for young companies, and we, we're working really hard at this at Redefine Horizons, is to start to develop those standard business processes. You want those capabilities to live in the organization, not in the people, right? Um, you don't want to have what I call the star player effect or the celebrity effect, right? Where if you lose a star player in your, in your company, the whole organization falls apart. It's not that people aren't important. They are important. But you, you want to have some of your capabilities actually reside in the organization itself and the way it does work, not just in, in the people that work for the company. And then we talked about over time, the processes that a company defines influences the way it sets priorities and the way it sets priorities uh, become its culture. Okay, and so I'll, I'll just, I have an example of that. So I worked for a large engineering company and the team I was put on did primarily construction work, so 90%, 90% construction work. And I came in to do what we call the mapping work, which is land development, boundary surveying, topographic mapping. And I really struggled there. And I didn't get the resources I needed. You know, the, the best crews were always on the construction projects. And a lot of times the best office people were on the construction projects. And I would get an office, I'd get a survey tech trained. And then when they, when they finally got good and started to develop some capabilities, they'd pull, pull them off my team and put them on the construction team. And I, and I don't fault anybody for that. I was on a team where construction was the priority. That was the culture. That's what they were good at. And the reality is I was always going to struggle with that organization because I was trying to do the type of work that was not built for that team. That, just, that team was not built for that type of work, excuse me. So I wasn't getting the resources I needed. I didn't, they didn't have the processes to find that I needed. And so I really struggled there. And I struggled there until I left and went to an organization where you know, I didn't always have to be subordinate to the construction surveying team, right? And my boss and I had honest conversations about that and I told him, you know, this might not work because you, you guys are geared for construction and that's where all the best resources go and I'm always going to struggle as long as I'm getting the scraps, what's left over. So, the, the, you know, that's part of why it's really important to figure out what your niche is going to be as a surveying company and then to be good at that niche, right? You can't be good at everything and, you know, it's not fair to hire managers, especially middle mid-level managers, and and try and help have them build a new capability for your organization and not give them the resources you need. That's part of the point. The point of this larger article from HBR is sometimes you just can't do it, depending on the culture of the company and, and the type of capability you're trying to develop. Sometimes you have to do that in a new organization or a new team. It's you can't always graft it onto an existing team. And um, it's a really great article. I encourage you to read it. It's not super long. It's 15, 20 pages. We'll put a link to it in the comments. I tried to apply that to the realm of surveying today, so I hope that helped. And uh, we'll do some more videos about business processes and just business concepts in general.